today we're going to talk about three topics. It's going to be, let me look at my list because I've forgotten. We're going to talk about Samantha Markle, Meghan Markle's kind of off the wall half sister. We're going to talk about Ron DeSantis. Now he's the governor of Florida who everybody thinks is the next Trump going to run for president. And then Piers Morgan, you Brit fans are going to know who he is and does he have some kind of obsession with Meghan Markle. So that'll be the topics. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. It just makes an awful big difference. And thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Yeah, these were some suggestions and I thought they were pretty interesting. So Samantha Markle, someone wants to know, and I forgot who it is, I'm sorry, but if she's going to win that court case against um, her sister, she's suing her again. And uh, you know, it's funny because Meghan Markle says that uh, her sister, half-sister, who she doesn't even know, there's a whole almost generation of age difference between them two. They didn't grow up together, although they were aware of each other growing up apparently but uh, that she never used the Markle name after she married and maybe remarried uh, until uh, Meghan Markle became famous and uh, pointedly actually when Meghan became uh, Duchess. And that's when she decided, ah, okay, there's some money in that name, perhaps. Uh, so we'll do a drawing on that. And then Ron DeSantis is just the governor of Florida, and you know I'm from Florida, and I'm so sad to see things go the way they've gone, but he seems to be a mini Trump in his mannerisms and his uh, ideas and, um, and, and the just sad decisions he's made uh, for Florida that seem to be in the interest of the base. I guess that's all it matters to, to politicians is who's going to vote for me? Whatever they want me to say and do, that's what I'm going to say and do. Maybe that's how democracy works anyway. Well, and then the last thing is going to be Piers Morgan. And uh, someone said, does he have some sort of obsession against uh, Meghan Markle and why does he seem to have made it part of his life's work to um, to uh, attack her and could it just be well she's the name in the news and he wants to grab onto that uh, bandwagon that's what I think but let's see what the cards say <laughs> We go. So the topics today are pretty interesting, I think, and uh, these uh, cards uh, should be pretty good for that. And if you stay till the end of the video, I'll tell you more about these cards in detail. But um, yeah, so three topics we're going to talk about: Samantha Markle. What is up with Samantha Markle? Why can't she leave her sister alone? You know, she hasn't gone out and made the fortune herself. So why is she trying to horn in on? It's just got to be heartbreaking for uh, Meghan Markle to have a sister attacking her like that all the time. So that was uh, Dolores uh, Liggins, about three weeks ago, asked that question. So do a video about Meghan being sued by her sister, Sam, and uh, will that uh, turn out for, and how will that turn out for Meghan, or how will that turn out for Meghan? So that's what the first one will be. Then um, Janet Murphy, thank you so much, Janet Murphy, uh, says, does DeSantis stand a chance against any decent Democrat? So DeSantis and Democrats, what's going to happen there? And then uh, Leo Bunny, thank you, Leo Bunny. And you say, um, and thanks for the reading, uh, the last reading that you commented on. It was four days uh, ago-ish, maybe six days by the time I'm making this video. Uh, but thank you for thanking me. And then you said, uh, you want to know a reading on Piers Morgan and his obsession with Harry and Meghan is weird and she feels stalker vibes and I have to agree with you but I think it's simpler than that I think it's monetary but uh, we'll do uh, readings on those three things and I have uh, notes about it in front of me just the, the who's the questions are and what the question who the questions are from and what the questions are but you know before we do too much let's have just a moment of meditation So number one, Dolores Liggins, thank you. 
and uh, Megan sued by Samantha and uh, will that turn out for Megan? So let's do a little starter on that. Let's do just uh, three cards and then right away we'll do a six card. This might be a little bit longer video than the other ones. We'll see how it works out. So how will this suit from Samantha be for Megan? How would this suit from Samantha be for Megan? Three cards. One, two, three. How would this suit by Samantha be for Megan? First card. Ah, Six of Swords, move out of troubled water. Moving out of troubled water. You know, swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And in this card, we've got, um, well, we've got a little family here, it looks like. We've got someone pushing the boat. We've got uh, an adult inside the boat and a, a younger person. So how will this be for Megan moving out of troubled water. Interesting. So is this suit, because that's the question we're asking, how will Sam's suit uh, turn out for, for Megan? And it says moving out of troubled water, and that's regarding truth, justice, rules, and law. So it could be Megan's moving out of troubled water, which doesn't bode well for Samantha. Next card on that is uh, the Six of Cups, remembering the way things were. Cups are emotions, um, uh, heartfelt situations, um, compassion. And in here, um, yeah, remembering things that when things were simpler, when things were better, when we cared about each other, um, if that was ever the case. And you know, I just noticed in the background here, and I've never noticed in this card before, maybe you can see it, there's a figure standing over here with a lance, almost like a knight, almost an armored figure here standing with a lance, way in the background next to home, like a protector somehow looking on. I don't know how, what that means, but... Um, remembering how things were in the past. So it could be that some component of this uh, reminds them that they're sisters, maybe. And then the final card, how will uh, this turn out for Megan, um, is an Ace of Wands. So this is a great big offer, and Wands are uh, forward movement, uh, actions, plans. So this turns out to be a great big offer of a plan, of some kind of forward movement. How will it turn out for Megan? Well, she moves out of troubled water. Somehow, there's, there's a hearkening back to when things were simpler and better uh, in the past, emotionally, certainly. And the final result will be a big plan to move things along. I wonder if Megan won't offer some kind of help for Samantha, actually. I don't know. But let's do six cards, and we'll get something more uh, definitive on that. So, six cards for how will this suit B for Megan, that's while well, she's being sued by Samantha. How will the suit be for Megan uh, that she's being sued by Samantha? I think I've got a jumbled up question, but you know what I mean in the cards now. So uh, six cards. This will be a dyadic cross. And remember, if you're uh, interested to know more about this deck, you can just wait till the end of the video and I real quickly uh, tell you something about them and show you more of them. So that'll be good. Um, also, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. All right, so six cards. The signifier card of this drawing, how will the suit be for Megan that Samantha has brought? The signifier card is the lovers. Ah, this is interesting. I love this. This is Major Arcana. The lovers is finding common ground, um, caring about each other. Um, this is a beautiful card to be the signifier. Perhaps there will be some sort of of a, uh, of a of a reunion so of some sort. I don't know if you could cut, even call it a reunion because apparently they weren't really like sisters so much. Um, the challenge to that is the Hermit. And what is the Hermit? He's the Major Arcana. He's about halfway through the Trip of the Fool. And he's the person who's really shining a light on his way. He's got um, a plan for firm steps. He's testing the ground before he moves forward. So he's the challenge to this uh, perfect pairing is really finding the right path to take. The basis of this, uh, the basis of the whole thing, of course, is the devil being tied to lesser intentions. It's a frivolous suit. It's just there for attention, for money, for not for anything good. Um, the past of this is the two of wands. The past of this in terms short term, or involves rather, short term plans. All right, wands are actions, plans, forward movement. And so the past of this reading is one 
plan firmly in place, another plan just about to be acted upon, and really surveying the landscape to see how do we go about this. But this is in the past, so it's been studied and there's been a decision about how to move forward in this. We, I guess we really want to know how is Megan going to come out with this. In the sky of this is the Knight of Swords. Okay, this is the fighter. And so this is what's going to happen here. The Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And the Knight is going to fight for those things, every one of them, to, the, to his death. And so this is um, Megan's side of this. She's not going to let go of the truth, the justice, the rules, and the law. And that's what will, looks like will be her aim. But what will be the final outcome? Well, money. That's interesting. So the final outcome of this will be a great big offer of, of oh, is she going to pay off her sister? Let's read it again. That's sad. The end of this is, uh, the signifier of this is uh, lovers, finding the perfect pairing, making friends. And the challenge to it, though, is being very careful about the steps you take towards uh, that end. The basis of the whole thing was lesser intention, and the past of it is involves careful planning. In the sky of it is that determination to get the truth, the justice, the rules, and the law, get it right. But the final outcome, it looks like, is going to be some sort of a, uh, it could be value, you know, pentacles could be value, usually it's what it is, but in this case, it, because we're talking about a lawsuit, I think it's money. I think somehow there's going to be a settlement for the sister, whether it's deserved or not. That's that's how what it looks like to me. hate to see that. But sometimes that's the cheapest way, the best way, the most expedient thing to do. Uh, sadly, though, when you give in to those kind of demands, you're just encouraging more later. You know, the sister, Samantha, is uh, supposedly a bit crippled now anyway. Now, the next question then is from Janet Murphy. Thank you, Janet Murphy. And uh, you say, does DeSantis, Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida, uh, Republican Party, looks like he's going to run against uh in the in the presidential primary for 2024 and does he stand a chance against any decent democrat and so far it looks like it's going to be joe biden and we don't know that ron is going to get the republican nomination even so let's see let's do three cards to see if ron is going to get the republican nomination Will Ron get the Republican nomination in three cards? One, two, three. Janet Murphy. So let's see. First card is Temperance, Finding a Perfect Balance, Major Arcana. The next card is the Five of Swords, which is an abuse of power. Okay. Five of Swords, uh, Swords of Truth, Justice Rules of Law, and the Five of Swords is an abuse of power. And the question is, DeSantis, does he stand a chance against any Democrat? And we're saying there's an abuse of power. And then the third card here, and I'm asking if he's going to get the nomination, is the Eight of Pentacles. Pentacles are value. And the thing about the Eight of Pentacles is this craftsman is practicing his craft to get it right. He hasn't got it perfect yet. He's done pretty well. He's got some examples of what he does up on the wall. They're all a little slightly different. He's working on another. He's got something waiting here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of Pentacles. Practicing your craft to get it just right, but not quite finished. So does he get the nomination? Um, finding that perfect balance. Uh, there's an abuse of power on his part, and he hasn't quite found uh, the, the perfect balance to his craft. I'm going to suspect that he doesn't get the nomination. But let's do six cards on Janet Murphy. Your question, does DeSantis stand a chance against any decent Democrat? Does DeSantis, Ron DeSantis, stand a chance against a decent Democrat in that 2024 presidential bid? Let's see. Six cards to add across. One, two. I thank you all so much for watching. It really made a big difference. You know, look at me. I'm sitting here in my office reading cards for folks I don't know and hope that something uh, useful comes out of it for you. Uh, I don't get paid uh, for any of this. I don't make revenue from YouTube because I haven't met the minimum number of subscribers. And uh, so I hope that you would subscribe. The signifier card for will he stand a chance against a decent Democrat? 
and this is the hierophant. This is the, the hierophant is usually the government, or or at the least the structure by which an organization or a situation is uh, managed or run. And so the signifier of this thing is very appropriate because we're talking about running for president, and this is the hierophant. So that's the signifier. We're talking about government. The challenge to that is uh, the Page of Wands. So the Page is the very weakest of the Royal Cards. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. And so the Page really, he's not like a knight who's going to fight for his uh, his uh, wand, his actions. He's not like a queen who's got quite a bit of uh, uh, authority. And he's certainly not like a king who has the ultimate authority. But he's just the fellow who brings this to the court and says, well, you know, here's the message. Is there anything we could do with this? So the challenge to being the government is that this is a very weak uh, offering. Uh, Ron DeSantis is a weak offering. The um, base of this whole thing then is the Four of Wands. Four of Wands, again, actions, plans, forward movement, and the Four of Wands are celebrations, and they're smaller celebrations on towards something larger. So the base of this is winning that nomination, not the presidency, but winning that nomination, I think. And um, so that's what's, what is the purpose of this. The past of this is the Five of Wands. Again, action plans forward. Look at all the wands. Action plans forward movement. And the Five of Wands is pointless arguing, uh, useless uh, battle, um, painful disturbance. Uh, so that's what's in the past uh, at that point. In the sky of this, uh, Ron DeSantis stand a chance against a decent Democrat. Well, we got the Seven of Wands. And here we have... So again, more wands and actions, plans, forward movement. And the seven of wands is interesting. If you look at it, this uh, person fighting here, he's got one action, one plan here to fight off all these other actions here. And there should be six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, and he's seven. And look at his disadvantage. He's got a sandal on one foot. He's got a boot on the other foot. He's got a lot attacking him. So I would say it's going to be um, a struggle. It's going to be a fight. Does he stand a chance against a decent Democrat? And then the final outcome is the Six of Cups remembering the way things were. And the Cups are compassion, emotion. And I think what's going to happen here is uh, he's going to hearken back to how things were as governor uh, before he took on this, this race. Um, I don't remember if once you run for president you can still fall back and be governor. I presume you can. So I guess that's what's going to happen. He's going to fall back to be governor of Florida and not necessarily make it forward. So we'll read it again. Uh, Ron DeSantis, does he stand a chance against a decent Democrat? Well, we're talking about the the government here, the Hierophant. Uh, that's the goal, um, the signifier. And the challenge to it is that this is just a weak offering of a plan. The basis of it is trying to win this nomination on towards the presidency. The past of it is this just endless bickering, arguing amongst your peers right here. So this could be his fight amongst his peers even that is the downfall for him. The other Republicans trying to get the nomination perhaps, seems like to me. In the sky of this is still him uh, fighting all these actions, okay? And he's so disadvantaged, doesn't have a sure footing whatsoever. Uh, in that in that battle, and then the final outcome, I think he falls back to being governor of Florida, goes back home to where things were nice and rosy and peachy, and finishes out his term. That's what I say. So no, he doesn't stand a chance. The um, even even getting out the nomination in his own party, much less a decent Democrat. I don't think he gets that far. I don't think he makes it out of his own party, which may say that it's Trump. I'm not going to pull on that now. Now, the last question is from Leo Bunny. Thank you so much, Leo Bunny, for your question. And um, you say, um, Piers Morgan's obsession with Harry and Meghan, is he really like a stalker? Well, that's interesting. Uh, what does a stalker want? A stalker is obsessed with watching somebody... Uh, you know, almost leering over their every move. Uh, for what end? Is a stalker there for a noble end? No, he's not. He's there for his own uh, selfish, selfish gratification. That's what a stalker is about. So uh, we're going to go right to the, the drawing. Six cards for Piers Morgan. Um, his obsession. What the cards tell? can they tell us about his obsession? One, two, and it does seem that way. Three, four, 
five, six. Isn't his obsession kind of masked or presented as a real love and devotion for the monarchy? I think. You know, I'm just an American, so I don't know. The signifier for this is, ah, two of pentacles, finding a balance. Yeah, he's got some value in his hands. He's, this is Harry and Meghan. He's got some value in his hands, and he's working that balance, trying to find that perfect balance to keep those balls up in the air. What's the challenge to that? <laughs> the challenge is are wands, and you know, uh, pentacles are uh, money or value. And uh, the Ten of Wands, Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. Ten of Wands is a hard um, thing to carry up the hill, a hard bundle to move. He's got to, he's got to wrap his arms around against all those actions, all those plans, and and move forward. But this guy's got a good stride going on, you know. So he's got pep in his step. So the challenge to finding that balance is that this is a lot to keep carrying. This this uh, grudge. Uh, the basis of this whole thing is the Three of Pentacles building something for public display. Pentacles are value, it could be money, but yeah, this is what this is. The basis of this whole thing is that he's just trying to keep something up there present for the public to look at. And I guess he's made the decision that this negative um, press is the best way for him to put something up for the public uh, to look at, get his value up there. In the past of it, this Nine of Wands, action plans, forward movement, in battle. Look at this guy. He's beat up. He's hanging on to that plan. All the other actions are behind him. But that's in the past, so he's still got something to keep this fight going with and is determined to keep the fight going. In the sky of this reading is that Five of Swords, and that's that abuse of power. So the aim of this, the, the, the noblest aim it is, is that it's an aim towards truth, justice, rules, and law, but as an abuse of that power. That's very sad. Abuse of power. And the question is, um, uh, his obsession uh, uh, against Meghan and Harry and other Starker vibes. And then the final outcome, the Eight of Wands, actions, plans, forward movement. So many things uh, happening. It looks to me like the final outcome is that, is that there's so much to choose from. There's so much dislike there that he's going to have plenty to keep uh, going in this regard. That's how it looks to me. So I think, let's read it again. Piers Morgan and Harry and Meghan. What's up? Obsession? Stalker? Well, yeah. He's determined to keep those balls up in the air, to keep things going. And the challenge uh, of it is, is that there's a lot to move up the hill. And the basis of the thing is the whole thing, the whole point of it is to build something for public display, to put something out there for you guys to look at and, and leer at. The uh, past of it is the Nine of Wands, which is being in battle, hanging onto that plan you got left, but really be having been beat up. And these other plans are go behind you, so you may feel a sense of accomplishment, but exhaustion. And in the sky of this, with this Five of Swords, is that the whole thing has to do with an abuse of power. And that's the abuse of his, his uh, public pedestal. The likely outcome of this thing, then, is that, yeah, there's still plenty there to deal with, and uh, he's just going to keep on. It's all about money for me. So that's what I got today. Thank you three so much for asking those questions. And, um, you know, let me know what you want me to read on, and I'll read on that. I'll tell you that again in just a minute. So I hope you liked the uh, results of all those uh, cards, and I hope you agreed with my interpretations. And if you didn't agree with my interpretations, tell me. Tell me what you think. I'm, I'm up for it. You know, I'm not fail-safe, and who knows if any of this is accurate or not. I just tell you uh, what I feel and what I see. But what will happen is if you tell me what to, you want me to read on, I'll read on that. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So this is Llewellyn's Classic Tarot. Uh, book by Barbara Moore and illustrations by Eugene Smith. Love the box that this comes in. It's got that neat uh, magnetic clasp on there that I'm just a sucker for. The book is very good. I mean, it's a full color book. It's got very good um, suggestions for how you can use these cards in the divination. And then it talks a little bit in here also about uh, Barbara Moore, Eugene Smith. So I, I like the book. The cards. I mean, everything about this works. You can, you've got a little ribbon to help you pull the book out, and then it double, does double duty to help you get the cards out. And let me show you those. Now, if I understand correctly, the idea that Llewellyn had is that this is the Rider Waite system, but it is a clearer, uh, less cluttered um, 
uh, images for the uh, divination uh, of the cards. So that's apparently was his uh, remit to um, the uh, illustrator or the artist, uh, Eugene Smith. I'll let you spread them out like this so you can get a chance to, you know, just look at the cards. If you don't look at cards a lot or maybe you're thinking about buying some cards and you're thinking about these, you run across this and this gives you an idea if you'd like to have them. I don't know. I just like to spread them out this way. It's an alternative way of shuffling them. And it works really well if you're doing a reading and you have someone who might not feel comfortable shuffling the cards, but at least you can kind of get their energy uh, into the uh, cards this way. So this is classic tarot, and I like them a lot. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again, so ciao for now. make a big difference. Thank you.